Hello crochet friends, welcome back. I've got an easy beginner scarf pattern for you today. This is a free pattern on my website. It's a one row repeat and you can make it any width and length you want. So let's get started. This is the scarf that I've created for this video. You can see that the colors change throughout the scarf and that's because it's a yarn that is dyed that way. This is the yarn that I used, Super Saver Stripes and in the Polo Stripe colorway. So if you enjoy these colors, you could look for this yarn. This is the free pattern on my website. The link is in the description below and you can download that if you'd like. Now let's look at the materials for this scarf. We're going to be using a worsted weight yarn. This one happens to be acrylic, but you could use wool if you'd like. The way to find a worsted weight is a number four medium weight on the yarn label. This yarn also changes colors on its own and it's dyed like that in the factory. Changing colors on its own will give you more visual appeal in your project. Now these two yarns are also worsted weight. You can see the number four on the yarn labels, but I would not recommend either of these for beginners and this is why. This yarn splits easily when you're crocheting with it. It's very soft and it's wonderful to use, but the splitting can be problematic for beginners. And this yarn has lots of extra fuzziness in the yarn. And if you need to rip back any stitches, if you've made a mistake, it's hard to get your stitches apart because the fuzziness sticks to each other. So when you're a more seasoned crocheter, then you can go ahead and use some of these yarns. So we're also going to need a size H or I crochet hook. An H is a five millimeter and an I is a 5.5. Depending on the thickness of the yarn that you choose, you may prefer the H over the I or vice versa. Because I'm using this yarn in the video, I'm going to choose the I hook because it's a little thicker worsted weight than some. Now the pattern starts with 22 chains and I've already done my chains for you. If you're not sure how to start your project, check out some of my other videos. I've got a video for holding the hook and the yarn, one for making the slip knot, and one for making the chains. I've also got a video on doing double crochets. So you can check out those videos and watch those if you don't know how to do those yet. Now we're going to start our first row with the double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. So we're going to count back one, two, three, four. And I always like to insert my hook under the back loop and the back bump under two strands of the chain and that makes it stronger on the bottom edge. So we're going to yarn over and insert our hook in that fourth chain from the hook and do a double crochet. And in this pattern, that's all we're doing across the row is a double crochet in each chain. So we've worked in this one and we're going to work in the next one. And each chain will get a double crochet in it all the way across. And I'm going to work my first row all the way to the end and I will meet you when I get to that end. Here I am at the end of the row and I have one chain left. So I'll do my last double crochet in that chain. And now we're ready to count our stitches. 
For beginners, I recommend you count your stitches in every row until you get very comfortable doing the same number of stitches. So these three chains that we skipped count as the first double crochet. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. And that's the number of stitches we should have. Now if you want your scarf wider or narrower than the six inches in the pattern, you can add more foundation chains at the beginning or you can remove some foundation chains. And you would have more or less stitches than the 20 here. And that would be if you added two, you would have two more stitches. So we are ready to start row two. Now in double crochet rows, you can chain two or three. And I prefer chaining two in my double crochet rows because of the height of my double crochets, which are on the shorter side. If you naturally crochet taller double crochets, you may prefer three chains. And I prefer to turn my work on double crochet rows to the left or counterclockwise. Now, if you're left-handed, you would turn them the opposite way, of course. These first two or three chains will count as your first stitch, so you want to skip the first double crochet and work your first double crochet in the next stitch. And we always insert our hook under the front and back loops of the stitches. And you can't see both of them from this side, if you rotate a little bit, you can see them. So we'll work a double crochet in that second stitch and a double crochet in each of the stitches across. And I will meet you when I get to the end of row two. Here I am near the end of row two. And I have one more double crochet here where I'll work a double crochet. But this is not the last stitch of the row because remember I said these three chains that we skipped count as our first double crochet. So we need to work a double crochet into these chains. We want to go under two strands of the double crochet. So we will choose the top two strands as it's facing us and go under those two strands. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get your hook in, but you just squeeze it in there and pull up your loop and finish your double crochet. So let's count the stitches in row two to make sure we still have 20 stitches. Our turning chains count as the first stitch. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So we're good. Now I'm going to give you a tip here before I continue. If you have trouble finding where to work your last stitch of the row, I want you to go ahead and put a stitch marker or a safety pin or a paper clip or even a contrasting color of yarn in the top chain of your turning chains. You can put that stitch marker any place in those chains or in that top chain, but you want to get it in that top chain. And you can see this is my first double crochet, so this is where I want to place my last stitch on the next row. And right after doing the first double crochet on the next row, we can put another stitch marker in. So we're going to do the same thing with two chains or three chains for our turning chain and turn our work the same way and skip that first double crochet and work our first double crochet in the next one. Now I want you to stop here and get your stitch marker and go ahead and put it in the top of the turning chain, in that second or third chain, depending on 
if you chain two or three. And that's where you're going to work your stitch when you come back on the next row. So on this row, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to double crochet in each stitch across to the end of the row. And I'm going to do that, and I will meet you when I get to the end of this row. Here I am at the end of row three, and as you can see, this is where my last stitch will be placed with the stitch marker in it. So I'm going under the two strands, just like before, to place my last double crochet of the row. Now I want you to count the stitches in your row. And make sure you have 20. When you have used up all the yarn in your skein, or your scarf is as long as you want it, then you're going to want to finish off your project and I'll show you how to do that. Let me take these stitch markers out because I don't need them now. We'll pretend that my three rows is a bunch of rows and my scarf is as long as I want it. So to finish off, I will yarn over and pull through that last loop and I'm going to cut my yarn about six inches long. We don't want to have it too short. And then we'll pull this loop, or the strand, through the loop that I just made, and tighten that up a little bit. And we're going to have our beginning tail and our ending tail to weave in. And whenever we weave in ends, we want to use a tapestry needle, which has a blunt tip. They come in different sizes, and this size is a good one for worsted weight yarn. So I would like to pinch my yarn, the tip of my yarn, in my fingers and carefully insert it in that eye. And then to weave in the end, I'm going to go under this back strand at the top of my stitch. And I'm also going to go under this strand at the back of my stitch and these two strands, and what I'm doing is I'm weaving down to the bottom of this last row. Then I'm going to weave across under the bottom strands of each of the stitches. And I'm not going to go all the way across, but I'm going to go under a number of stitches, and we want to make sure that this doesn't get too tight or too loose, so you're going to adjust it. I'll go under well, about four more stitches, so that'll be a total of eight stitches. That'll be enough. Now, if I just trimmed this off here, this end would work itself out. So this is what I do to keep my ends in place. I want to make sure that that's not too tight or too loose. Then, see this ending strand that I went under? I'm going to go over that one and under the rest, back the same direction that I started. And that is going to secure this end in here because it won't be able to stretch as much as it would if I only went one way. And with a scarf, it's going to get a lot of use there we go. And you don't want that end to come out. So that end should be nice and secure. We'll trim that off. And we will do the same thing with the beginning tail. We'll put it in our tapestry needle, and it's already at the bottom. So all we have to do is weave across the bottom of these stitches and we would do the same thing. Going across, I would go across oh, eight to 10 stitches, go over one loop and come back the other way. What you would be aiming for in this beginner project is to have nice, even stitches and even edges in your rows. See how my rows are nice and even, the edges? 
if you work your stitch in the correct place, when you get to the end of your row, you'll have even edges. If you worked your last double crochet in this space instead of in this chain, it would make this space too wide and it would not look attractive. By working in that top chain under the two strands, it helps pull that chain in and your edges stay nice and even. And you want to make sure that you have the same number of stitches in each row and nice even stitches. So this is a great project to practice your double crochets and get better with them. I hope you've enjoyed this video on making an easy beginner scarf, and I hope you'll give it a try very soon. You'll be glad to have a nice finished project that you can wear or give as a beautiful gift to somebody. Have fun picking out the yarn colors that you like or that your recipient would enjoy wearing. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching and happy scarf crocheting to all of you.